I will pass, I will pass over you. One more time. Oh, when I, oh, the blood, when I, I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. And all God's people get praise. And all God's people get praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So wonderful. So wonderful when God's people get together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The shoot is in the camp. Praise God. God be praised. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that is wonderful. Yes, Lord. That's it. The Lord loves us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, it's said God loves to come to church. That means that you didn't come here. God came here. If he wasn't in you, you wouldn't be in here. So therefore, it'll have to be God in you, bringing you to church, putting a desire in you to come. The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, only the spiritual man. So God come to church today. God worships today. God gives praise today. And who gives the glory? We'll give all the glory to Jesus, to Jesus, and tell of his love. If I was going to sing, huh? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel like singing. I feel like shouting. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I certainly want to greet all the <coughs> out of town group and special group. It's so good to see you to get together. And I didn't know how. It's a very important day, April 9th, 1995. Important day to me individually is the day that I was baptized with the Holy Ghost in five, 35 years ago. Oh man, my birthday. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the only thing I could want would be another refilling of the same infilling that I received 35 years ago. That white light exploding in my soul. Never be the same again. So praise God and what this is all about. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. Uh, different ones kept asking me, well, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do Palm Sunday and Easter? I said, I don't know. I really don't know. I says I have to go up to the place in Pennsylvania to find out because I'm too tired. I can't get the phone ringing down here and everything. So on Thursday morning, I was sitting there eating a sandwich. I said, Lord, what can I do? How can I get these people together? You said, bring them together for this message. 
and maybe on a hookup and that's no good because they can hear but they want to touch amen <laughs> they, they want to see <laughs> with skin on him <laughs> not just here on the telephone that's good but they put some skin on there amen <laughs> praise god so you know the lord loves you i'm sitting there inspiration i could never figure it out he says bring them together he says bring all the special out-of-town people together sunday morning then let a and o prefer their brethren and they come sunday night that was it <laughs> so here we are we together again <laughs> praise god and so everybody's here together and tonight a and o they'll see one another praise god and then on the 23rd we'll all see one another amen so something must be moving it must be a purpose amen so praise god now you know i want to thank you for your prayers and cards of encouragement and everything and and mainly for your prayers to be here i'm here by faith literally i fought through the, the almost the beast of ephesus to get here amen and uh I didn't think, I said, Lord, I just cannot make it, not with the condition. And I went in the pulpit last Sunday to get all that out of the way so they wouldn't be here this morning. And you saw how all the videos led right up, huh? I said, just God, he told me, this one, that one, this. And how could it come on Wednesday, the trumpet of the Jubilee of the seventh seal? How, how could that be? And even on that tape, uh, you were told, see, you got to get ready for the day of vengeance. It's right on that tape. Two years ago. See, the Lord knew it's bringing up, bringing up, bringing up. See, and then got to Wednesday, and here we are. And you're free. Shout. And sh shout the real message out, and every wall will come down for you and your hearts, for your families, wherever they are bound in. Uh, what prison praise god amen it don't matter hallelujah because the jericho wall and all the years of preaching not one time did i ever see that there that he uh jo joshua uh the cap and the host the pillar of fire only told joshua how many times to walk around seven days and on the seventh day seven times he never told the ministers anything he just told them to march and so what a th great thing that was a uh, pill of fire told brother Branham them seven seals and seven thunders <laughs> he never told the ministers nothing amen so what a blessing to and then in georgia uh, inspiration i remember saying oh my enlarge your mind seven thunders in the bride and we're just supposed to march around jericho as it was Oh my, that was in 74 on the inspiration. And then not knowing, and then all, reading all down through these years, and then 1993, he said, Notice, he said, Joshua just told the ministers to march, but not uh, how long or what it was. What, just, just march and preach and blow the trumpet, preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. But September 20th, he dropped in here. Seven thunders are the seven voices of the seven church ages. And on that seventh day, that seventh seal, seven times. And on the seventh, not 13, making 14. Brother Bram himself said that. Blast the real message out. And that's today. Shout. Hallelujah. So, oh my, so many things. In January, Brother Paul Griffin and I, he got talk, telling me about the inspiration like last year, the, the earthquake on plagues and germs and diseases every day, uh, flesh eating off this in, in the day's paper, all kind of abominations is going on and injecting these uh, poor Africans and different third world people with AIDS and things just to see an uh, experiment and so forth. It's ungodly to, to do that, you know, and the people don't know anything to get in a smallpox injection. They dropped it in Zaire, uh, Uganda, and Haiti, and, and Brazil, and in other places, and breaking out everywhere. It's germs, you know, diseases, and so forth. And even right in the, Paul, Brother Paul, I was saying how the Lord revealed to him that uh, uh, the fourth seal, 
uh, the, the, the a pale horse rider, which you'll see on his video, it is, is now ready. And my, my, I tell you, it's really something. And this message ties right into it. So you're going to hear it, and then you're going to see it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And how he was saying to me yesterday, the diseases and the germs is coming out. And how Satan would kill. Would, well, just let me get that. Because uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to time myself. This is just opening comments. If you sit down, then that's it. I have no more comments. That kind of wore me out, amen, over the years. And the, the fourth seal, and when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. It's Revelation. And I look and behold, a pale horse, his, and his name that set on him was death and hell father with him. And power was given unto them over the, over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, you wouldn't understand that. And then he was telling me, relating to me, how um, Sister Linda and different ones, she had some more germs coming out. And how some germ in Australia kill, went from the horse to his trainer. And they're taking animals and, the, and the, the diseases and germs are coming from the animals to the people. The scientists are doing it. And here's right here in the seal. How can you figure it out? It's like natural. No, it's going on. Horses and things and pigs and all monkeys and disease and germs coming from them to the human beings and it's going on now so brother and i remember way back in 1980 sister alma gomez i believe she's here somewhere she had that mind-blowing dream brother ran pouring out a his hand was from heaven and it's pouring out a, a golden liquid coming into a black cup and it was fire spraying and coming out and then i was under it I was preaching seven thunders give faith. And she said that she was first understanding the thunders when this was happening. The plagues and things was going on. And the rest of the people were too. So that was 1980. And uh, I'm going to bring it back when we show Brother Paul's video, that portion of the tape there. So anyway, it's finished. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me on the 29th of January and said, February 28th, that's it. And you get a sign. Brother Paul, he had to know how many more, how long did he have to wait to put his video together? How many more headlines did he have to see or whatever information? And told him on the 28th, that would be it, to, to go ahead and start. So when you go downstairs afterwards, you see a brother Ferrari. He picked it up and laid it there on the New York Times on February 28th. It was just released February 27th. The Nazis uh, stole... I mean, the Russians stole the, the treasures from the Nazis, and they stole it from somewhere else. And they had it there, and the Russians in 1945 took it to, back to Russia, and they just unveiled it on February 27th this year. And they had several masterpieces there. But for some reason, New York Times, they made them unveil John the Baptist with the cloud behind him. And that was my sign. <laughs> the spirit of Elijah. <laughs> Praise God. I feel doth rest upon Elisha. Praise God, amen. That was my sign. And then uh, next to it, you'll see in the glass case there, the experience that was up here at Mount Adam. And then Brother George, he'll be here tonight. I don't know, he drove up there, went through all those townships and made them get out maps and everything. <laughs> everything but he found it and he even found another town uh we originally had uh, paul really had uh, mount adam mount eve and uh edenville but brother george died he got it all together it's on the board down there he found eden off to the left and right behind mount adam coleman's ditch <laughs> oh my they better get off my mountain, I tell you now. I got a ditch to throw them in. Huh? A bunch of Philistines up on my mountain. I got a ditch already there. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. So, friends, those are signs now, and they mean something. And with that sword hanging there, and the prophet of God said, uh, when the sword came in his hand on Feast of the Trumpets, 
He says, then uh, uh, he wondered about it. It was his real sword. Then the Holy Spirit revealed to him later that it was the word. Amen. So the voice word is here to open huh, up the glory plans. The sword is the word. Oh, my. So I want to thank one and all of you, one and all for coming and whatever. It may just be a glorious time. Now let's have a word of prayer. Almighty God, thou hast ordained this day so that I take myself completely out of it. And I give myself over just to be an agency. A means that you can move your spirit through, your word through. And I'm assuming, Lord, that the people have come here in expectation. I'm assuming, Lord, that they've been in their prayer closets. They've been in their caves. And they've been listening for that still, small voice. And Father, you promised to throw fire on them and they open. And they open. Amen. Lord, I know they're tired and weary. Getting up so early this morning. My God. May you bless each and every one of them and strengthen them out of Zion. Oh God, may the strength come down on them and they could be awake and give me back some fire. Amen, Lord. Praise God and keep me moving. I'm trying to do this. I don't know how it's going to be done and I promise uh, A&O that I would come back tonight and with my kidney uh, uh, ailment for two or three weeks now and subsiding a little now it's the numbness and tiredness there so you have to anoint me to do that but I'll do the best I can this morning but I know it's important it's a changing of the season of time amen and so strange that there's a uniting tonight and a uniting this morning so now father may the power of God Bless all the visitors from Connecticut and different places that have come in. We haven't seen them in many years. Amen. And all the out-of-town people from Pennsylvania, I don't get a chance to see them. I just want to uh, greet them, all of you this morning. May God richly bless you. I probably won't get a chance to shake your hand after because I'll be too tired and got to get myself ready. Amen for tonight. So, Father, may you anoint me now, Lord. Thank, 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 thank you, Lord. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, may the power of God come upon me. May strength come into me. May you heal me standing here. May you refill me. Oh, God, praise God. It may come up on my wife. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, thank you for that touch to be able to preach now. Amen. Glory to God. And now, Lord, may you bless the people. May there be sealings, healings, refillings, deliverances. Oh, God. May you just have your way today. Bless all that's in our midst, Lord. And bless the service and preparation for tonight. And Father, strengthen me now. I just felt your strength come in. Amen. Felt the anointing right in. And uh, you help me, Lord. I got the notes here, but I just want to say what you want me to say. Almighty God, and give the people an awareness as I speak and open their minds to the age that this is the final age this is it to the young people that are straying away lord or just moping around lord may you shake them up and let them know that this is it amen so father uh bless the re reading of the word and bless the hearing bless the hearing up in the preaching of it we'll be careful to give you all the praise honor and glory for we ask it in jesus name and his sake amen and amen would you just remain standing for the reading of the word please Praise his wonderful name. Uh, Exodus 12. 
Psalms 86 and St. John 14, 12. to see Andrew and Lori. God bless you. Amen. And Charlie, here y'all had a, quite a storm down there. Amen. Shouting. Amen. Pennsylvania there. Wish I was there with you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's the kind I like to get in on. Amen. Dance to our fall out. Amen. My old legs won't hold up, though. Praise God. Amen. So, okay, um, Exodus 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In Psalms 86, uh, just back up to the 15th verse. Um, but thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. Save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, has hope in me and comforted me. St. John fourteen twenty. Amen. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. May God have a blessing. To the reading of his word, you may be seated. Uh, Brother Norman, I'd like to take for a title, The Everlasting Covenant is the Token Displayed. I have a subject, and I'm quite sure all of you feel the same way. Show me a token for good. Amen. So now, um, pray for me to come back on the way down, because AM is special here, and out-of-towners, and PM is A&O, and the Holy Spirit said it must be done on April the 9th. And as you know, um, I think it was uh, the other day here, I read to you from uh, Ezekiel 33, I told you that March 17th, the Lord gave me this. I'll just read it if you'll find it. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the pe people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then uh, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own, upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and he took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Verse 7 so thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of the Lord uh, at my mouth and warn them from me. So he gave me that for this third phase. He says, you're finished. You don't have to go back and reprove from uh, Ezekiel 3.17 through there. Over and over and the wicked and the righteousness is gone. He says, all you have to do, they know the message. They have the revelation. They have the inspiration. They got the tapes. They got the books. 
there's no more for you to have to do that no more. He says, uh, you have to, actually it should be like on the day of Pentecost, Brother Branham said, when the Holy Spirit poured out, all those people went out there uh, uh, telling all those people all around what this was. They knew what it was. The ones that was filled with the Holy Ghost in other languages. They were hearing in other languages, the Parthians and Scythians, and those people were filled. Not coming inquiring, praise God, and confused and don't know what's going on. Hey, no, I finished. The time is over. You, you brothers, are so be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak the word. Somebody hear it in another language. You so fill it the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. On your jobs, every, everywhere you go. Amen. Not just coming and sitting. Amen. No, sir. Up and about. Glory. Amen. Maybe see it. So, therefore, it must be done this way and, and given warning. So, I just have to warn, just come in and preach and warn. That's all. As to the season of time from Malachi 4 7, see a message of the testimony of Jesus. Uh, for this very judgment hour, remember, right in the judgment hour comes the restoration of the Omega bride, a spoken word bride. So, if you know the Bible, if you know you're saved, if you know the blood is over your soul, there's no fear. This is the hour that, that you wanted. This is the hour that you come to. This is the hour that God ordained you to come to this hour. Praise God for this purpose. Not to be moping around, to be on every Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, going on like fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Warning then judgment. Amen. Jeffersonville, 19, 7, 24, 63. The prophet warns the people with a message from God. Then the people make their decisions, yes or no. Then God sends a judgment to those who refuse to take heed to the judgment hour. So I just had it like that. He said, no, pull the quote out and read the quote. So I'll read his quote then. Amen. I was just going to hit it and go on. Page 28, paragraph 28. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading. It's very outstanding subject for a short message here. I believe I want to call it God doesn't call a man to judgment without first warning him. And uh, we are to catch the background of the, or the platform of it here. And this text tonight, God warning man before bringing him to his death. Now, everyone has this. We might say, well, this fellow died without a warning. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, God never. You don't know what was in that man's heart. You don't know what's going on in his life. See, God never brings any man to his death without first warning him about it. Telling him it's something, a preparation. Amen. You, we're being prepared. Amen. For the day of vengeance of our God. And everybody here know it. Special message to prepare you. Hallelujah. Everyone knows this, praise God. Amen. Warning of God and tell him as a preparation. God is sovereign. He knocks at the heart of every man, giving him the opportunity to come. Now he might warn away and turn it down and shake his head and walk away. Ah, just a funny feeling. I'll get over it. But anyhow, it was God speaking to him. Yes, sir. And God never brings judgment upon the earth without first giving the people a warning. God never does it, nothing without de declaring it first what he's going to do. And he gives the people a choice. And you, you can do right or wrong. That's his, see. God can never change his nature. His program can never change from what he started with. Because he's infinite. And his program and his ideas are all perfect. See. Uh, so if he would change it, then he would show that he had learned some more. Do you understand now? So he cannot change. If he changes one eye older, then, then, then he's not God because he can learn something else. And there's nothing else to learn. All things is perfect. It's just that it has to be revealed to us. Amen. So God speaks it. That's his word. Adhere to it. And may be seated. Amen. Praise God. He's sovereign. Amen. Okay, change uh, started, right? His program. Okay, uh, so being infinite, he cannot learn more. His first decision is always perfect. 
and there's nothing ever can change it. If he says that you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, to be born again, you must be born again. Well, then that's it. They can run up and down and say you got it when you believe it all they want to. But you need to receive the fire from heaven to burn the spirits out of your hearts. There's no other way. He said it first. He's not going to change it. Amen. Maybe see that now God giving warning, preparing for, prepare for judgment. The atomic bombs in the hangers. Everything's set and ready. And God, before he can let this thing happen, he makes a call down through like he did in Sodom. Come out of it. Get ready. There's something going to happen. Amen. Uh, paragraph 94. He does not always strike when he warns. I want you to watch this now. See, a lot in the message, a lot of family, different friends. Well, nothing happened when the prophet's gone. Ain't nothing happened. See, well, he tells you here. I want you to watch the question. God gives a warning, but he don't always strike the same time he warns. Did you notice that? And then when he doesn't strike, when he sends a warning, then the prophet is mocked. You didn't have it. You told a lie. Brother Bram, you deceived us. No, he told me what to say. Sure. Yes, sir. Glory. You wasn't right. Maybe see it. See, you have to watch. God don't always strike when he warns. There's one thing, then the prophet is mocked. But if he is a vindicated prophet with the word of the Lord, see, signs of God vindicated, as God said the prophet would be vindicated, which these men were. See, his word is not his but it's God, and it will come to pass. It's got to come to pass if it's God's word. There's only one thing can stop it. That's a quick repentance. That's all. There, now watch, here we are. Here we stand. There is a coming blessing, just like there is a coming wrath. And we have to be looking for one or the other tonight. You have to, to, to be either looking for the wrath to fall upon you and for destruction, or you have to be looking for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The God that promised the wrath also promised the resurrection. That he have a token to be displayed to take you to the resurrection. And it would be vials and plagues and judgments and the wrath of God. And the spiritual death taking out the uncircumcised. He promised both. One is a negative promise and one is a positive promise. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe seated. Praise God. Everybody feel the fine? Amen. Okay. On God's uh, 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 oncoming storm. Oh, it pays to take warning. Amen. The first thing to do before there can be a warning. There has to be a preparation made for safety. And God sent a prophet to give us a preparation, a message. And that message was a judgment, but... The, Mercy and grace was there. Hallelujah. Time has moved down. Oh, we're here. The preparation has had a token. The message of the hour. Come in, come in. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. All right. A, a preparation made for safety. A, a, a Goshen somewhere. Amen. And by the way, right up here near Mount Adam is also a town called Goshen. Right near it. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I might go through there in the spring just to rest. I might see a whole lot of people packed up in there. So what are you doing? I'm in Goshen. Well, praise God, brother. Amen. All right. Yes, sir. Preparation. There's no need of sending a warning. And the warning is only a voice of one having you to prepare for the danger. My voice cried out here for years. Hallelujah. An echo from the prophet's message. Glory, glory. Now the voice of the archangel, praise God, will stand here himself. Hallelujah, praise God. First come a revelation, now will come a manifestation. God veiled himself. Praise God. Yes, sir. Amen. Okay, maybe see it. Then if the preparation is made, then the warning can go forward to cause you to make your decision. See? The warning goes forward to cause you 
here tonight to make your decision. It's no play thing. Do you want it or you don't want it? He said, one or the other. You can't hang in between. Come out of the world, stay in the world. Yes, sir. Glory. If you don't want uh, your decision whether you want to listen to it or not, if you don't want to listen to it, well, that's up to you. If you do listen to it, there's safety. God has the same method. We work on God's method in that way. God in the early days when the antediluvian world, when people had gotten so wicked and so sinful that God could not look upon it and be just. Excuse me. And then that pale horse rider was going forth there, had it stuck here. Uh, paragraph 107, I'm told in the Bible, there'll come a time for those who are not in this wonderful sunlight that the fowls of the air will eat the flesh of them. That diseases is on the road that doctors will never be able to stop. It's the plagues of God. Are we here? Are we here? On the radio, on the TV, on the newspapers. Right this morning, flesh being eaten off. AIDS and HIV and four new strains coming from Thailand and uh, uh, Africa. Coming in on the uh, uh, normal people. Amen. Four new strains of HIV. It's all for promiscuousness. Outside of your own wife, it is, they're going to mow them down in the streets for their looseness and filth. Glory to We better thank God. Hallelujah. We're under the blood. And we can find a Christian wife. And she can find a Christian husband. Don't you go outside for the wrath of God. Young woman, young man, don't you take somebody from outside. The wrath of God is already on them. And you're being warned today. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You hear my voice cry out to you one day. The day you hear my voice harden not your heart. You got a mama and a papa that's praying for you. Hallelujah, glory to God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. That's why you see the young people getting married. Amen. Maybe seated. Praise God. They love God. And amen. Oh, my. What an hour we're in. The people don't know it. The fowls of the air will eat the flesh of them. Diseases is on the road. The doctors will never be able to stop. It's the plagues of God. The Egyptian doctors, which was far smarter than ours today, smarter than ours today, could not stop the plagues of God. Neither could their soothsayers or the impersonators. It took Goshen and the power of God to hold his people under the blood of the Lamb. Oh, the day is the token. My God. The Holy Spirit is that door today. The Holy Spirit is that door to safety today. Oh, my the hour is coming, and now is. Now here we are. What, what, what are we gather for in this third phase coming up here? Amen. Starting April the 9th here. I look for the power of God to go through here to June 18th. My God, and seal away, everyone, praise God, before we ever even come to Indianapolis. Can you imagine coming down to Indianapolis? Everybody fill, seal, heal, storming into the Indianapolis there. Power of God. You walk out, you can't even preach five minutes. Oh, God, let it happen here. Praise God. Amen. Maybe see it. The hour is coming now is. Thank God we have a place where we are preaching. The ink horn rider is here. Glory. The hour is coming and now is. And the ceiling is about over. But just about over, there's a few predestinated seeds that's got to be sealed. And that's why we have this third phase. Water, the word, blood, seven thunder blood, revealing every bit of the word. And that word is a, a fullness of the atonement, the blood of Jesus. Then when God, pillar of fire, sees atonement, he steps down. He cannot come or he'll kill you. But in New York City, there's a blood of atonement here. The fullness thereof. Now the pillar of fire, the voice of the archangel can step down in here. An acorn rider can ride through. 
those are sighing and crying in their closets, in their caves. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. Go ahead. Yes, sir. That ain't going right his head this morning. Maybe seated. He's here. And the seating time is about over. Amen. And that where every man and woman on the face of the earth is going to be in that place of refuge. Like it was in the days of Noah on the outside of it. You have to make your decision. <clears throat> that safety is Jesus Christ. He's the only place, the only place that, who has eternal life. No man can come to the Father but by him. He's the ark of our safety. The Holy Spirit bears record with us now. And we have passed from death into life. We see the newspapers in the oncoming storm, 1960. And what do we see today? Amen. He's prophesying. Second pull. Amen. When, when you go home tonight, do me a favor. Don't you go to bed until you read Revelation, the eighth chapter. You see the oncoming plagues and storms that will hit the earth. Thunders and lightning are going to shake the heavens. Wolves are going to pass over the nations. Men will rot in their flesh. What's going on now? Amen. Diseases will strike them. Doctors know nothing about. Going on now. Amen. Prophet prophesied it. Amen. Amen. We with a prophet, brother. A prophet's message that cannot fail. Cannot fail. Amen. Maybe see, don't you ever doubt, don't you ever worry about what did Brother Brown mean by this or that? He's a, he, was a, he, he is a prophet, not was. If you could call him up like Samuel, he'll come up, praise God, as Malachi for a prophet. And see a vision and tell you what to do. Amen. Maybe seated. Praise God. Glory to God. And you're a child of the king. You're predestinated, praise God, to be sealed by the acorn rider. Yes, sir. Okay. My God. We see the newspapers, plague storm. Amen. Okay, but remember, before that took place, oh God. Here's a little short span of time. This third phase, the inkhorn rider. I hope you wake up, New York. This is your hour. This is your day. This is the time now, now, now. Don't walk away. Come in. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Did you get it? Maybe see that. He said, men are rotten in the flesh. Diseases strike the doctors know nothing about. Then he said, but remember. Before that took place, there was a seed that went forth, and they laugh in the message at it. And this is Brother Brown's message. They're not even looking for it. A seed that went forth. Before that took place, there was a seed that went forth, and the death angels and the plagues was commissioned by God. Don't come near any of those that have the seal in their forehead. And the seal of God is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 37. So grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. No matter how hard the ark rocked, no matter how many times the lightning struck close to it, 10,000 shall fall on your right and thousands to your left and it shall not come nigh thee. Oh, what a, we'll be back on that word then, brother. I read... Uh, of a pale horse rider going forth which is called death and hell follow him a black horse rider with a balance in his hand a measure of wheat for a penny and two measures of barley for a penny don't come near my oil and my wine do you understand the oil and the wine right now just as the fourth seal is breaking in hurt not the oil and the wine the ones that got the token over them Blessed be the name. Could be 50 million devils standing right there. And you stand there. You cannot hurt me. Praise God. Go on your way. Praise God. Loose here, devils. I have the all I got the wine. I'm getting revelation after revelation. Power after power. Vision after vision. I'm on my road to the resurrection. I know where I'm going. Get back, devil. Clear the gangway. Give me my son. Give me my daughter. Praise God. They're going with me. Jerk them out of there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Amen. May be seated. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Amen. May be seated. I hear by the Bible God's oncoming judgments where sickness and trouble and disaster will strike the nation. Every nation will break to pieces. Oh, my. There's a prophet. Praise God. Amen. You believe that? Okay. God's provided way of healing. Amen. What is a cancer? Ch Chicago, 1954. Uh, it's a, 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 what is a tubercular? What is a disease? We, we'll deal on that for the next five minutes. What is a cancer? What caused that thing? Let's take a cancer, anything you wish to take. Tubercular, pneumonia, whatever you wish to do. Any disease. Disease or germs. Let me pass something here quickly as our time is going on. Listen, did you know that the Bible predicts in the last days that there'll be a germ warfare? And it's going on now. Yes, sir. That disease will break out upon the people and will fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Where's these guys? You got it when you believe it. It'll fall on everybody without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Without. Oh, praise God. Without the token. Maybe seated. Oh, my. But the angel or who had charge over these plagues was given orders to touch not one who had the mark. Why, how much, uh, 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 how much kind of teachers have we got to be, brethren, to get the church in order to be in that condition? Immune. We, the minister has got to get you immune, and the, and the inkhorn rider has the inoculation. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And he's coming. And I see him inoculating somebody there. And you say, come over here. Come over here. Here's my arm. Here's my arm. No, here's my heart. Here's my heart. Here's my heart. So wake. This is a special message to our church. Maybe seated. Brother Brown said, my arms are sore now from where the doctors had punch holes, needles to try to inoculate me from yellow fever and so forth. I told him I didn't need it. The prophet didn't need it, but he had to take it anyway. But they wouldn't listen to me. But I'll tell you what God's going to do. He's got a serum, and it's called the Holy Ghost. And when that serum goes in, it'll inoculate you. Hallelujah! In the last days. Oh, God, let that serum go in this morning. Yes, sir. Praise God. Oh, my. Speaking about Ezekiel 9. You may be sitting over and over you hearing it because it's here. That's why you keep hearing it. Ezekiel 9. Okay, Mark of Christ, 1955. Notice when he saw six men coming from the slot with slaughtering weapons. They came uh, from the, forth from the altar, dressed in white all over, and a writer's ink on his side. And, and before the men could go through and slaughter in the city, he said, Go ye first. Now watch. Go ye first. God's mercy before judgment. That's why on the third phase. Mercy of God before the whole world is judged. He's coming to inoculate you. The ink horn rider. Oh, hallelujah. What a talk about a praise. Talk about a faith. Hallelujah. Maybe seated. Go ye first. God's mercy before judgment. I'm sure that's what America's hearing now. God's mercy presented to the people before judgment. Then when you see this man went forth with a right and ink on his side, he said, go in the city, set a mark on the forehead of those, those men in this Jerusalem, that crying sign for what the bomb they did in that city. Otherwise, before the great destruction came in there with Titus and so forth and besieging it, and they only marked those who sighed and cried for the abomination that was done in the city. God foretelling it so they'd be sure to get ready. Amen. Amen. So therefore, he said, the angel of mercy left those Jews and one of them went to the Gentile church. Paul said, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. They will hear it and went to preaching to the Gentiles. And then when the great time come, the big confederation of churches come together and went into the city and Titus besieged the city. And for years he kept them in there two or three years till they starved to death and boiled their own children, eat it 
And Joseph is right in your computer, says that this woman took her baby, had nothing else to eat, and she boiled it and was eating it. And if somebody smelt flesh in the city, some soldiers ran in and said, well, you got meat in here? She says, yes, my own baby. Uh, I've eaten half of it. Here, you can have the rest. And they, they walked away. Oh, now this is a mini tribulation period. Why? Because they rejected the inkhorn rider. And 120 were crying and sighing against, on his first coming. 120 were crying and sighing in the city. They had just killed, crucified Christ. And they had rejected Messiah. So therefore, he gave them a chance before he would disperse them. And they went out, the apostles and Paul and them, and they preached for X amount of years. Then A.D. 96, John sealed the New Testament with the book of Revelation. And God completely, totally turned to the Gentiles. The Jews was finished. Praise God. Amen. As a nation. Hallelujah. And then came the Gentiles. Arrhenius, Martin, Columba, Luther, Wesley, Malachi 4. Oh, hallelujah. Now, church, listen, listen. This is the second coming. They rejected Christ. That was Christ's message. When you see Jerusalem can pass the mob and armies. Pray at your flight don't be in the winter. That you don't be given suck in those days. They rejected. They laughed. Huh? At the Holy Ghost. They blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Oh. That was the first coming. This is the second coming. And the same God and not another. Came back in 1933. He picked up his prophet. Amen. The pillow of fire come down on the Ohio River. Then God gave him three pulls. And out went three pulls from 1946 to 65. And out went the message. Amen. Oh my. And they blaspheme it again. Then God gave 30 years, we in the 30th year, to call out an election. And during that time, praise God, he blesses the New York with a revelation. Huh? To make sure, to make sure there would be some seeds here that would not reject, that would not be deceived, that they got it when they believe it. So what am I doing this morning? Oh God. On that third phase, that voice of the archangel will drop down in that pride. Once more, the world will hear direct from God as at Pentecost. The voice of the archangel will belch out, praise God, and warn him again in a short mercy. The ink horn rider will come through here again and enter Indianapolis and spread across the world. And those that mock at it this time, they'll blaspheme God. Praise God that totally finish oh hallelujah praise God and the church members turned a deaf ear to it and went back to the devil and said no I believe I went my God so he bored the ears and the ears are bored right now oh hallelujah praise God my God my God yes sir Oh, oh, here, yeah. amen. You may be seated. Having conferences, amen. Having conferences, we read over in the book. It said, The angel went forth and put a mark on those who sighed and cried for the abomination. This is real. This ain't no plaything. We're not just keep saying this over and over and over. They were the only ones that will be sealed. This is reality. Playing church is over. Hey man, you may be seated. The angel went forth and put a mark on those who sighed and cried uh, for the abomination that was done in the city. And realized by the scripture, that was the first come and see of the Holy Spirit through the city of Jerusalem. Then it went on for X amount of years. And then Paul turned to the Gentiles and their time was up. And then on his second Return now, the Lord Himself descended from heaven with a shout, with the preparation, with the inoculation. So you cannot warn unless you have a preparation. 
So God sent a prophet to prepare with a message. And then he could come back and rebuke and warn. And his prophet, his prophet had already prophesied in the second pull all these terrible things that's supposed to happen. Pray it. Then he come humble, simple on the third pull. Where's this? Where's that? Already spoken already. And he dropped these plagues and things. Oh my. It's, it's almost finished. We're just here now to, to hear this, this message this morning and tonight. Glory to God and go in our prayer closets. Amen. You may be seated. Then on his second return, this age, to call the people out of the Gentile for his name, how much more should we be concerned and sighing and crying for the abomination that's done? We see churches practicing rock and roll and bingo and having all kinds of swimming contests and so forth in the church. We have prayer meetings and all night tiring meetings just forgotten. Oh, hallelujah. We're here. Brother Bill was telling Brother Baloma here, faith is our victory. He had one of the canoe books here. And Brother Branham, I've been telling you to go in your closet and trying to tie it into the tent and the whole thing. Page 24, paragraph 134. I hope I'm not fanatically, but it just seems to me now just like I go into my room and pull the door together, enter into a secret closet and close the doors. I just close off all, uh, all, all the audience from around me and pray to God who seeth in secret. And he that seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it will be open. For everyone that seeketh, findeth. Oh, my, in this hour. So there they are, friends. Yes, sir. So now, friends, do we understand? The prophet warns the people. Amen. With a message from God. Then the people make their decision, yes or no. Then God sends the judgment to those who refuse to take heed to the judgment hour. That's where we stand today. All over. Amen. June 15, Holy Spirit quickened in me, 1 Corinthians 7, 29. The time is short. So the anointing will come upon you to make that soul. Time is short. <coughs> Run for your lives. Amen. He said two callings. He said you have a revelation call to prepare New York City for the judgment hour. And that was the seventh thunder of the seventh voice of the seven church ages. Amen. He said a little later, a little later date, there'll be another call. Amen. So for 20 years and two months, amen, Psalm 87, 16, crying out, weary, worn, exhausted, show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, O Lord, has hope in me and comfort in me. And the Amplified Version says, show me a sign of your evident goodwill and honor and favor that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, will show your approval of me when you help and comfort me. And I, also, I added, and, and you, comfort you also. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Right here in this judgment hour. Now, Christ has, church, has the hour come for the voice, listen to, to my words now, has the hour come for the voice of the archangel to descend from heaven with his voice, even the second fold of the threefold mystery of 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. The Lord himself, this is a mystery, shall descend from heaven with a shout, voice, and trump. Is this the second fold of it? Of the threefold mystery of 1 Thessalonians 4, 16? On this third phase, as the inkhorn rider, oh, to inoculate you. Is this what's starting today? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory may be seated. The shout, the seven seal, Master Malachi 4, the voice to be in the spoken word bride. The third phase is to call the other members of the body. Amen. And number two, he told me, would come a late, little later date, there'll be a call to the resurrection by the everlasting covenant, the token displayed. So I was thinking about preaching that today, and he said, no, 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 no. I went up to the state there. He said, you can't do that. He says, uh, there, there's many got to get sealed yet. So you, you can't call them today to the resurrection. So a little later on, when I, let me, the uh, inkhorn rider go through there. Amen. <laughs> let them seal them up in there. Then call them to the resurrection. Amen. 
Praise God. Okay, friends. Now, so much for that side of it. Now, let's get over to the other side here. Amen. What is the everlasting covenant? Amen. Page 359, Hebrews 7, part 2. Paragraph 422. Listen close now as we close. And at Calvary, God came down and took the body of his own son which, in which he had lived. And he ripped it apart at Calvary. His bleeding, wounded, cut, and the spear ran in there and ripped him apart. And his blood gushed out. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He bowed his head. The earth shook and the lightnings flashed and the thunders roared. God was writing his everlasting covenant. And he took his dead body from the grave on the first day of the week, brought it up into heaven, set it there as a high priest, as a memorial, sitting there perfect forever. And he, now watch, this is very important. And he sent the spirit that he tore out of that body right back down on the church. And that church will have to have the same spirit that was in that body or it won't dovetail with it in the resurrection. This is what this message is all about today. Your birth won't do. No, uh uh. Believing won't do. Justification won't, no, uh uh. Sanctification, I'm sanctified, I'm looking for it. I'm already sealed already in 83 or what? That still won't do. You need the token display. So this should get everybody in the church here. Amen. Those two pieces must come together perfectly. And if this church isn't perfectly, just exactly the same spirit that was in Christ, you'll never go into rapture. The very same spirit of Christ, St. John 14, 12. The works that I do shall you do also. Same life, same spirit, same sign, same one as they were up on the early bride and up on Malachi 4. Praise God that's got to come back on Elisha. The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. It's a promise, you know. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. There's the everlasting covenant, brother. Seek it out. What's in your heart? Love the Lord. Really be sure you're saved. Don't take a chance on it. You're gambling. We American people love to gamble. But don't you gamble on that. You be sure that you're right. Not because you joined church. But because you are truly born again. Christ has come to you in the person of the Holy Ghost. Now, just complimentary, just as I'm closing, how happy we should be to see the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ right among us, doing the same thing he did when he was here on earth. How happy we should be. Uh, let us pray if you bow our heads. He told them that the same spirit was on him. You see, that's what he tells them in the first and second pull. So he knows what he's talking about. That that's got to be on us. And he brought us the message. And the rapture anointing that was on Elijah is bound, promise, to come upon you. That's the anointing that went in the rapture. And that anointing is here today to come upon Elisha. And it'll take you plumb into the resurrection and the rapture. It'll be the same spirit. And here's how it's done. Do you see church? Maybe seated. That church will have to have the same spirit on it or it won't uh, dovetail with it in a resurrection. Uh, two calls to the people. Uh, amen. By the, the voice of the archangel. Amen. I went out with a, a revelation call on the second phase. And now I'm looking for on the third phase for a manifestation of the revelation. Amen. The bride shall have the anointing of spirit of revelation 22, 17 upon her. The spirit, the everlasting covenant, the token displayed, and the spirit and the bride say come. You understand it now? The spirit and the bride say come. That is the token display. That is the everlasting covenant in Revelation 22, 17. It'll be on the people, on the bride. Whosoever will come. Pray, whoever's a thirst, come. All right. Okay now. Why is the everlasting covenant not eternal? On the token, page 43. Amen. I'm watching my time here. I ain't got too much time left here. I have to get out of here at a certain time. Amen. To conserve my energy for tonight. Amen. <clears throat> page 43. Uh, Hebrews 13:20, the token. I haven't got time to read it. Put it down. 
I'm going to read it. It's called the Everlasting Covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ is called the Everlasting Covenant. Yes, sir, the Everlasting Covenant. Why wasn't it called Eternal Covenant? Because it wasn't, it wouldn't be eternal when we are redeemed. It's all over then. It is everlasting, which means a certain amount of time. I, uh, uh, till time, there will never be another one. When time runs out, we won't need no covenant. But until time runs out, we need the covenant. Yes, sir. Now remember Hebrews 13, 10, and 20, everlasting covenant. God's bound, blood bound promise makes us free from sin. Amen. There is no sin in them. Uh, amen. Worship him. Show forth his promise power. God's blood bound, token bound covenant people. But the spirit of Jesus Christ uh, has the spirit of Jesus Christ here until he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Now, here's what it means. Displaying the covenant. See, New Testament. Testament means covenant. That's right. Is that right, Dr. Vale? Testament means covenant. The New Testament means the new covenant. The Old Testament was the old under the Lamb. And so forth. He goes on. The New Testament was under the Lamb of God and his life back on us. Blood is life. The life in the New Testament. Amen. And after those days, I write my own laws upon the fleshy tablets of their hearts. See what it is now? The spirit covenant will I make with the, these people. So do you, do you understand now? And even over here, uh, I'll just get it here. And uh, when, I ha when I do the weddings, this is the uh, benediction that I pronounce over the husband and the wife uh, when I, I turn them around. <clears throat> Here's what I say to them. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. That's pronounced over you. Amen. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to be whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. There's your everlasting covenant that's pronounced over everybody that's married in this church. Amen. Amen. Until eternity. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then what about the Christ and his bride? Hey. Everlasting covenant. Oh my. It's here on the third phase to give it to us. Praise God. Displaying the covenant. See the New Testament. The New Testament is the Lamb section of the book of life. Maybe seated. The New Testament itself, the whole New Testament, seven church ages, is the Lamb section. Amen. And amen. Section of the book of life. And the token displayed is the everlasting covenant. It, that is them. It's for them. Praise God. How do you get the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, the token, into you or into yourselves? Well, on the statue of a perfect man, he tells you. Amen. Now, the hours come to apply the token. He says so here on page 8 and 9. Now, he says uh, the blood on page 8 is a token and the token must be applied or even the covenant is not in effect. The blood was a token and identification, identifying the person has been redeemed. And they were redeemed before there was anything ever happened. By faith, they applied the blood. Before it actually happened, the blood was applied by faith, believing that it was going to happen. Before the wrath of God passed through the land, the blood had to be applied first. It was too late after the wrath had done fallen. And now did you notice, all these years waiting what is, what is it? Some thought it was this interpretation and so forth. Now in this third phase, here comes the token. Not the blood. Today is the spirit. Oh, and now when you're born again, then you begin to apply the token. Oh, hallelujah. On the third phase. You were just believing it. You were trying to get in the house, come out there. God forbid that you would be on in, the, in this side of the street and your son was caught across the street on that night. He had to be in the house with the blood over it. This is the house of God, the bride, and the blood will be over it. Hallelujah, glory of God. All right, we'll show you how you apply it. Statue of Perfect Man, page 50. If you die, you take the blood out of a man. You embalm him. Trump of it is, a lot of them never got embalmed. You take the blood out of a man, he's gone. 
then the only thing you can do is put another blood back in him. If he's going to live again, you took the blood out. And now we put the blood of Jesus Christ in, see? And that brings the faith of Jesus Christ, the virtue of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the temperance of Jesus Christ, the patience of Jesus Christ, the godliness of Jesus Christ, the brotherly kindness of Jesus Christ, and the love of God, which is Jesus Christ. There is applying the blood on the third phase with the ink horn rider inoculating you. Praise God with the blood. Hallelujah. We are here. April the 9th, I declare unto you. Praise God. The third phase is on. Oh, hallelujah. Praise. Glory to God. God be praised. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated. He's the head that controls you. Your feet is the foundation. Faith. Amen. Controlled by the head takes the people. There you are. There's the perfect man of God when he possesses these virtues. There's your token displayed. After faith, faith, you're born again down there. You can't stay there. You got to see the, the blood, the spirit over you. Amen. You could take what well, any Israelite could, could run in there. Say, look here, Moses, I don't have to go in there. I can show you my circumcision, which is a type of the Holy Ghost in the heart. Not enough. The token. That was in 1906. But this is a person, son of man. Why, praise God, the son of man in, the, in that bride will be the same self person. They will be one. Same life, same spirit, everlasting covenant, token displayed. This is a message for this time. This is a message for this hour. This is a message for this day. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you're sealed. Maybe seated. Maybe seated. You're sealed. A seal shows on both sides. Page 51. Whether you're going or coming. Don't matter. Going or coming. You see the seal just the same. There you are. See, when a man or woman possess this, then the capstone comes down and seals them into the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Ghost. And then the everlasting covenant, the token is displayed. Oh, my, my. Praise God. Yes, sir. And there we are. Where we at? We got a little time left. <laughs> 45 minutes so far. Amen. Doing good, brothers. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, okay. This page 12. The house of God is the body of Jesus Christ. The house of God is the body of Jesus Christ. And by one spirit, we all baptize into the token and become part of it. And God said, when I see this token displayed, I'll pass over you. What an hour are we living in? Old blood identified uh, the, the believer because the life had gone out, could not come back, so he had to have a chemistry. He had to have it like a paint, a blood chemistry. That showed that life went from it. Now, the very spirit itself is the token. The Holy Spirit itself is the token, not the blood. The blood was shed at Calvary, that's true, but the blood... As for so far I went into the elements which he came from see all right and he says uh, but the token is the Holy Ghost upon the church that they see Christ nothing less than Jesus Christ it has to be because a man and a husband become one they become one and so does the bride and Christ become one the ministry of the bride and the ministry of Christ is the same on this third phase where you're inoculated by the inkhorn rider. Glory to God. Mm. Yes, sir. Praise God. You know, actually, he says his death didn't stop him. He returned again. Not the same person, but the same person turned back in the, in the form of the Holy Ghost. And it continues to work and kind of continues on since said the book of Acts. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is the token. That is the sign. When Peter and John passed through the gate called Beautiful, there laid a man who had been crippled, lame from his mother's womb. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give you the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. They, they talked to him, 
and knew that he, they were ignorant and unlearned, but they taken notice that they had been with Jesus. Why? The token was there displayed. Yes, sir. Such as I have seen a poor fallen brother laying there, crippled, disfigured, everything else, and the same life that was in Christ was in them, such as I have, I give it unto you. Hey Amen. Praise God. In my name you shall cast out devils. Not I will, you will. If you say to this mountain, say not I, you say to the mountain. Oh brother, the hour that the token is to be displayed is at hand. We can see it. We know that we're near the end. Now for all kinds of messages up to show signs and wonders. Now we come back for the church has got what. Now here we come back for what the church has got to do. The token has got to be displayed. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Nothing else would work. It must be the blood. Okay. Maybe seated just a little bit while longer. I haven't even been an hour yet. Okay. The church has got to come back, and that's what I'm doing now. All 30 years, I don't know what they're doing, but I know what I'm doing here. And I know the spirit is here. I know the ink horn rat is here. I know the dynamics is here. I know the shuck is dead. The seed is ripe. The door is fixing to close. And anointing of God will strike home. Amen. Saith God. Okay, you may be seated. Here the prophet identified the way back the token Jesus Christ. Desperation, paragraph 23. The token, what it is now, not just the birth, the token, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is among us. Way back in 63. We should reverence that. We can't hum ourselves enough. Taking off your shoes or getting on your knees wouldn't expel it. It wouldn't satisfy. It wouldn't suffice us. But a life that brings forth the fruit of the Spirit. Love and peace and joy. Remember this morning, preparation. Sent the messenger, the message with the message. Next thing he'd done after that, he sent the messenger with the message. He sent the pillar of fire for vindication. Next thing after that was the consolation, the assurance. Uh, you knew he was right. You was at peace. We have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. He prepared, sent Malachi for Elijah. With a seven seal message. The preparation for the people. Then he warned them in there. Then the pillar of fire come as a heavenly witness. Number two. To vindicate. He could turn left and right. Say your name is John Jones. Whatever. Son of man. Huh? Pillar of fire. Heavenly witness. Hallelujah. And number three. The consolation, the assurance, the token. We're going out of here in the third exodus. Hallelujah. Okay, maybe seated. Now this morning I told you, being with you, I think we had another two or three hour message this morning. This is uh, the night of the token. This is desperation. I just got started. I thought I'd just carry over tonight. But it's just too tremendous. I don't know whether the people got it or not. I hope they do everywhere. I hope there were some good tapes on it. So it can be carried out to be known that I believe of all the message that I ever brought that absolutely was ordained of God. Outside, of course, of the regular commission, like the seven angels, see the, like the seven seals and things, that was directly the word of God. But I'm talking about a message to preach. I believe that one, the token, was it. See, the one that's needed to follow the seven seals. If you don't have the token to follow it, what's in the message? Everybody got books, computer, tapes, everything. And it's going on with seven seals. Some take seven thunders, some don't. But brother, he said, what's needed to follow that is the token. The everlasting covenant, the token displayed to go into the resurrection. So we know we have the correct inspiration. 
Oh, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Hallelujah. You should be so happy this morning. Hallelujah. You should be shouting and praising God. Amen. Let me see that. Amen. The one that needs to follow the seals. Now watch what come after the seals. The uniting of the people. United signs. The red light flashing in the last days. The sign of the women getting prettier. Men. What they would do. The signs of the Holy Spirit leading up. Then come right back here to the capping off of all those messages since the seven seals. It's capped off in this one thing. The token that we all write. Just check ourselves and see if we're in the faith. That means to see if you're born again. Amen. You don't have the Holy Ghost. Well, check yourself. Go in your closet. Praise God. Go in your cave. Lord, I must be. Where's that uh, inoculation? Inoculating angel at? Send him to my cave, into my closet. Oh, God, I want to be sealed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Check yourselves. Amen. If you're not sealed, then praise God. You're here to be sealed. Glory. You may be said it. Just check. Amen. It's capped off the token. All right. Check ourselves, see if we're in the faith. Amen. And okay, the, uh, God, the creator, he's talking about the lungs and speaking the word. It'll be so humble. What man calls mighty, God calls abomination. What man calls foolish, God calls mighty. But now, watch it. It'll be so humble that you'll, that you'll miss it if you're not got the token there to examine it. So, church, we have to get desperate. Amen. You, page, uh, paragraph 100. You can't be desperate till God speaks to you. Oh, church, rise and pinch your, check yourself. Pinch your conscience. Wake yourself up in this hour. We must be desperate or perish. There's coming forth something from the Lord. I know it as thus saith the Lord. There's coming forth something, and we better get desperate. It's between life and death. It'll pass through and won't see it. I just read everything already to you. You won't see it. Praise God. Okay, friends, and Peter and John and so forth, and now on desperation here. And now we come back here. How much time I got here? Oh, I got too much time. Amen. So um, <clears throat> now where we come back to the way the church has got to do. The church has got to do this here. And that's what I just finished reading here. On the desperation. Okay. Now you can't get desperate till God speaks to you. It's between life and death. It'll pass through you and won't see it. How much can I take of this? Amen. Maybe five minutes or so. <clears throat> no token displayed. No covenant. Okay? Birth is not enough. Let's nail it down. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay, on page, uh, I can take a little bit of this here. I'm going to give myself about 10 minutes to close out. Amen. Praise God. I'm trying to do this uh, scientifically or something. Amen. Praise God. I'm doing it by the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, page 17, 18. Oh, here we are. Okay, remember that token was not displayed. Even the covenant was annulled. That is right. So that's why I said the everlasting covenant. Well, that could be annulled. But I said, is the token displayed? Then it cannot. See what I did? I, I like to take my little titles and have a message right in the title. Amen. Amen. Intellectuals, minds are blown. Amen. I can't figure. What is the title, subject? <laughs> Amen. Remember, that token was not displayed. You can say, I got the covenant. You know, I'm circumcised. No, no, it's got to be displayed. Even the covenant was a no. That's right. The covenant was a no. There was no covenant as long as that token wasn't there. The token stood for the covenant. God made a covenant with them, yes, sir. But the token, it wasn't in effect. The covenant wasn't until the token was there. There might be many uh, Jews who could say, come here. I haven't got any blood on my door, but I want to show you something. I'm a circumcised Jew. I'm circumcised. I don't have no blood on the door today, but when I, when I bleed the message, I got it. Come here, see, because the brother, brother, brother man said right here, when you receive this message, that's the evidence of having the Holy Ghost. That, that, don't, that doesn't cut it. Uh -uh, he got to see the blood. <laughs> he got to see the token. Amen. Well, when I believe I got it, no, 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 no. When I see the blood, I'll pass over. Glory to God, amen. Yes, sir. That the, amen. I'm circumcised. That don't mean nothing, he said. Until, oh, he said, Paul, page 19, uh, I give my body to be burned in sacrifice and give all my goods to feed the poor. 
I have faith to move mountains. So faith, so forth, speaking tongues like man and angels and all these other things. I am nothing until the token's been applied. Do I know all the mysteries? Praise God. Do I know the, 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 the trumpets and the vials and everything else? Don't mean nothing unless love is there, which is charity, which is the token. Oh, how, yes. Until this token is, that is what I'm talking about tonight. The love, now this has been applied on nothing. I don't care. You might have cast out devils. You might have healed the sick by your prayer of faith. You might have done all these things. But that token is not there. You're under the wrath of God. I'm trying to tell you, New York City, I'm very tired and worn out, but we're in judgment. And God just holding it back, holding, holding. God had Brother Paul make the video of it. It's finished. It's here. You must get the token. You must get the token. Hey Amen. You may be seated. Oh, glory to God. I might have prophesied in your name, preached in your name, have I not cast out devils in your name? That is both Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal. Jesus said, Depart me. You the work of nickel, I never even knew you. When I see the token, I'll pass over you. Praise God. It's God's requirement of the hour. The evening time message is to apply the token. That is the evening time message. We should be able to go into any church in this message, walk in there, hear a man applying the token. Say, God bless you, my brother. Come up and say a few words. He get up in there, apply the token. Praise God. Then you got unity. Praise God. Then the, present, the prophet's message is going forth. Hallelujah. But they won't come to this. Hallelujah. Maybe seated. Satan will sow all kind of counterfeits, shaking hands. Uh, evidences and everything else forget it the hour has arrived at the token itself not some counterfeit make-believe substitutionary something the hour is here for the token himself identify himself right among us and prove that he is the same yesterday today and forever he's right with the word oh it's got to be applied a man that says he's got the token and deny this word, then what about it? You can't do it. The token's got to be there. The blood shall be a token unto you. It was to Israel. But today on page 21, the blood was the token. Now the spirit is the token. You shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Not, not many days hence. When the blood was shed, the token was sent down on the day of Pentecost like a rushing mighty wind. Hallelujah. That was the theme of every apostle have you received the holy ghost since you believe repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for mission your sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for it is a token amen that you pass from death unto life hallelujah oh glory to god Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. Oh, hallelujah. You must have this token. My God. You may be seated, friends. Oh. Now you got those three things now. You sent Elijah with the seven seal message, number one. The pillar of fire, number two. With the prophet for a witness, a heavenly uh, for identification. Amen. And then he sent. The third th thing he sent was the token. That's exactly right. The assurance. Huh? And we have it. Page 28. Oh, oh, it should make, it should make our hearts. Oh, apply it, church. Don't fail. Will you get it? Don't. Don't let the sun go down. Amen. Don't, don't, don't. Don't rest day or night. Don't take no chance. It won't work, children. It won't work. You must have the token. You say, I believe. Yes, I go. I believe the message. That's all right. That is good. But you must have the token. Do you hear Branham Tabernacle? You must have the token displayed. Branham Tabernacle must have the token displayed. That goes for everybody that claims to be part of this message. Black, white, yellow, red, or indifferent. Praise God. There ain't no separate messages. There's only one message, one Lord, one faith, one God, one baptism that's in you all and through you all. Glory to God. 
God's bride is all chopped up with this and chopped up with that. But there will come a time when that acorn rider will come riding through, praise God, and jab you on the left and inoculate you on the right, inoculate you there, sighing and crying against the abominations that's being done. Shut. Sure. Glory to God, you must have it. Hallelujah, praise. Put it up on them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glo hey, sha. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hey, the token is here. Glory to God. Hey, Amen. Place it up on them. It's being placed on you. This is the message of the hour. This is the message of the time. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. When shall we receive this token? When shall we get it? Hallelujah. St. John 14, 20. Oh, hallelujah. When will the token be displayed for the bride? Glory to God. Hallelujah. When? 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, my, my, my. Yes, sir. Glory, glory. Get ready over there. Glory, I'm finished. Hey, on time. Glory to God. He's here. Glory. When will the token be displayed? Here's the answer. St. John 14, 20. At that day, you shall know that I'm in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. This day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. The seven thunders shows the bride how to go. How do you go? You go by the token. The seven thunders reveals the entire Bible. And the entire Bible is a blood atonement. Then all of a sudden the token comes when I see the blood. Do you understand, friends? It's here. Oh, page 304. Wait till them seven thunders utter his voices to that group. To that group that can handle the word of God. God shut. Glory to Brother Andrew Wicker. May God pour the Holy Ghost into you now. May the acorn rider inoculate you. Oh, amen, David Puma. Praise God. Shut. Hey, hey. My God. The revelation of the seven thunders reveals the fullness of the atonement, which is the blood. Then the fullness of the spirit comes back into the church on the third phase to release the everlasting covenant, which is the token displayed. Apply time. Seven virtues in you. Hallelujah. Display time. Oh, we're here. Hallelujah. Don't stop shouting. Don't stop crying. Somebody's praying, Lord, come by here. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At that day you shall know that I am a father, you and me, and I and you. Glory to God. Holds the whole, St. John 14, 20. Holds the whole secret of the eternal purpose for all ages. God in Christ. Christ in you. Have the preeminence, his life and spirit. To restore back the bride to a condition like an Adam and Eve was in Eden. Oh, hallelujah. A display of the token. They took notice, hallelujah, that Peter and James and John, that the apostles had been with Jesus. Why? Because the same spirit was upon him that was upon before his crucifixion was upon them. And come back after the resurrection. There you are, church. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Voice, word, revealing glory plans. And we're here. Uh, that day you will know that I am in my Father and the Father in me and you and me. Believe us out this. Oh, hallelujah. Believe us out this 1950. And Brother Bram said, God made a covenant with the church and he wrote the Bible. And on the day of atonement, God killed his son. 1950. Tore him apart. Took his body up the right hand of his majesty. And sent his spirit back as a covenant to us. And at that day. When will the token come? At that day. Then you will find out. How will I know? I will be in you. You will be in me. Then you'll know the everlasting covenant is here. 
the token display. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That day, unless we have that same Holy Spirit in us, we can't go in the body. Oh, there's a message to you, friends. God in your heart. God goes to church. God worships in you. The hours come for the token to be displayed. The hours come for the plagues and judgment to fall. And the hours come for 2 Timothy 3. Members to reject the inkhorn rider riding through. Hallelujah. My God. To seat up those who cry in the sign. The hours come for the church to move up or go back. Amen. The hours come for God to pour out the Holy Spirit and the token. The hours come for signs, wonders, and miracles. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes, sir. Well, then, <clears throat> God bless you. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Let the church shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. The token is the entire Holy Spirit here to give you the token faith all the way to charity. When I see the blood, show me a token for good. And when it comes, it'll be manifested reality. Vindicated voice word. Abiding glory now. Can we give him a shout? Hallelujah. God bless you, Brother Robledo. Glory. Oh, I feel like something. We are free. Let the fires, diseases, germs, plagues, devils, demons. It don't matter. We're going out of here, Dave. On the third exodus. Oh, with the token. With the don't be afraid. Fear not, little flock. Amen, Brother Jim. You're free, brother. Hallelujah, you're free. I don't care where you've been at. You were predestinated. Could no minister stop you? Could nothing stop you? Come on, that pipe. Praise God. You're free. Free. He whom the Son of Man said free is free indeed. Amen, Michelle. Amen, you're free also. Praise God. Brother Willie, you're free. You don't drag yesterday's stuff around here. This day you hear my voice. Hard not your heart. Amen. Everybody's free. Glory to God. The acorn rider is here. Hallelujah. On time. Hallelujah. God bless. Yay. Yeah. Glory. Praise this wonderful name. Oh, Praise hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise God. Praise this wonderful name. Raise your hand.